What's up, guys? Hey, friends. Greetings, fellas. We have an offer for you. We'd like to make a small deal. We have an interesting proposition. Get the new shiny Yoda 2 ticket. Buy the new Starlada ticket. Support us with ticket purchases. And we promise to show you our best. We'll show you excellent and magnificent Dota. We will make sure you see some amazing games. Take the first step into the next season. We are counting on you. Help us make Star Ladder 11 awesome. We will see you again sooner than you think. Thank you for your support. And your contribution will make us a little bit happier. Thank you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final group stage match of Starladder Season 11 Europe. After this one here, we'll have a pretty clear picture of how this group stage will finish off and which teams will be going to Kiev for the land finals. But, Parker, we might have some dirty tie breaks to deal with. Absolutely. This is, uh, well, winner of this gets the number Ten one seed and can remaining. go to Kiev comfortably. But other than that, there's uh, already some confirmed tiebreaker matches. Starlight remaining. know what's going on and we'll have more Dota the coming the next couple of days. That's yeah. the good news. I That's guess. the good news. There will be matches tomorrow and the next day to determine uh, the seeding. Not sure exactly if it's going to come down to head to head time rating, if it's going to be a, a bracket or another mini group. Um, a, lot, a lot of different possibilities, and uh, Starladder will, I'm sure, be making an official announcement with the tiebreakers and the schedule uh, once this, uh, this, this match completes for the day. So, regardless, both teams here, as uh, Parker mentioned, this is a, a fight for the top. The winner here will indeed be number one, get that top seed, and um, I just feel a little, a little yeah. better coming into the land finals, perhaps. Something also interesting is Empire got a, a few days ago, got a default win against Team Secret because Secret were busy playing their Dota Pit match, so that... Oh. That turns out to make a big difference here. One, it helps Empire qualify for the LAN Finals. It's going to maybe hurt Seeker now to play tiebreakers. And to it's also affected the head-to-head, -head potentially, if that's being used in these tiebreakers. So yeah, Secret may be going to be kicking themselves there if they somehow don't end up at Kiev. All right. Well, it's all on the line here. Team Lions, uh, they've also been, been called Papa La John's, a lame American joke. If you don't know what Papa John's <laughs> is, it's a pizza place. And... It is pronounced Lions, but if you're American, that J, man, you just want to say it, you know? I guess if you're Australian, too, but you just want to... Oh, yeah. I just want to project that J every time. I'm going to make an effort not to make too many LeJohn's jokes, but it's always tough. Empire, look at this, though. Tiny Wisp. I think they've been, they've been doing this a bit. Yeah, um, Wisp was banned out in the last game by a uh, PR, I yep. believe, uh, in the first... The Wisp the first, Lycan ban? Yeah, 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 to open, so... A worthy, uh, worthy pick, worthy ban. Hero they're quite comfortable with. I believe it is always one of Fly that plays the Wisp. Ten seconds uh, remaining. Yes. Great. I've seen him wreck with this. This is the beginnings of a very scary team. Five Tied, Tiny Wisp, remaining. three heroes that... Yeah. A lot of team fight, a lot of damage, Reserve a lot of siege time. power. They did give up the Brewmaster to get this, though. I, Empire's bans are really funky. The Viper Disruptor... Um, I think looking at some of Lion's previous drafts, they had been playing quite a lot of the Viper, so it is a pick they prefer, like they like to go towards. But giving up a Brewmaster, like, do you think yeah. this is kind of like that Mushi style of drafting, where sometimes like who, I forget which two heroes he always first bans, but it's like Ricky, Ricky Husker, and, yeah. Ricky Huskar. That's it. Yeah, is it? Do you think this is sort of a similar like the Brood and Axe bans? Um, seem a little strange here. Maybe he's... their final picks will make it a little more clear. But yeah, I've seen Wait, some a, a few games of. Axe drafts from... I didn't see the Team games. I remember Empire's just doing a bit of research seeing pick. some heroes they've been playing. They have been playing some Axe, so... Okay. I think Empire, knowing just kind of some of these niche picks that Lions like to run, and you, would, you don't want to go up against these unconventional heroes that you don't often verse. You'd rather they force them into something more standard that you're like, okay, we're confident we can beat them in a standard game. Let's not give them any funky picks which can put us mm -hmm. kind of off-kilter. Yeah, I have seen Lions run Axe rather successfully. Just throw arrow in the safe lane, let him get that Ten fast blink dagger, remaining. and... They have definitely used it to a fair degree of success uh, in terms Five of getting some of that remaining. momentum. Empire thinking hard about this fourth pick, though. Lions grab Witch Doctor with their third for their Reserve second support. AAWD, not so shabby either for yep. some, some skirmish in there in the mid-game. Empire will need their second support and uh, their final core. Yeah. 
probably their resolution hero. Could be a mid or could just be a, like, ah, a safe laner. I no. like this pick. This is pick. fun. Yeah. This makes Brewmaster's life a bit more difficult. Because uh, Brewmasters, they always want to get the clap before they ult him when they blink in. Like, unless you're against like an Orchid or something with an Insta Silence. And Silencer Ultimate kind of fits in that same boat where you kind of want to clap, but also at the same time, if you get Silence, you lose the fight. So that's where we'll force Brewmaster into getting a BKB as one of probably his early items. Um, and it's just remaining. it works really nicely with like the relocate in. They can't really counter gank you too easily with uh, the global Five silence support. Remaining. Yeah, uh, this is this to me. This is like a, a an empire classic. They they were a team, team that even like last two three seasons of Star Ladder would occasionally pull out the silencer as kind of a pocket pick. I think that's when they had Van score. He he liked to uh, play that silencer on the four. Uh, but they've uh, had a lot of success with it in the past. Not the same lineup, but a hero they're very comfortable with. Now, Lions, they grab the Slark, remaining. another one that I know they like to run a fair bit. And um, ugh, that pesky little fish. Remaining. Hmm, they haven't... Tiny, good, got the AoE stun that can go through the, the invis. You've got Tide with Anchor Smash. Um, I think they've got an okay team for dealing with a Slark here. Mm -hmm. um, by no means, like, any hard... I guess the Silence is the closest thing to a hard counter, Radiant but... Team ban. Yeah, I mean, Global's pretty much... There's no hero that Global isn't good against. Yes. Uh, that's kind of a, a gimme. But just the nature of having the Wisp, I think, is a way to deal with Slark. He's one of those heroes that likes to get a Blink or a Shadow Blade, very mobile, run around. And if he gets that momentum, just kind of look Ten for pickoffs. You know, move Ten around, see if you can catch your really. Silencer. And when you have a Wisp on the field, it makes that Five a lot seconds, more difficult. Really. Where you always have to be wary of a, a tiny Wisp coming in and turning it around. And you know, that's a one-way ticket Reserve for Slark to, to struggle coming in into that late game. I, I do like the Empire draft a bit more. Yeah, I think yeah. overall just harder to fight against. I think you want to embed something like an Invoker here. Like Resolution can just tear things up. I've played a mid Invoker, Quaswex Invoker, where you just controlled the entire yeah. game. And even it may be a safe lane Invoker with a Wisp Tiny mid here, but mm -hmm. that's the kind of hero Empire need. I think some kind of good tanky versatile hero who's got a, yeah. some good initiation because Tide is going to go blink. You can blink Ravage for a team fight, but you want to be able to get like little pickoffs here and there, and that's where having a good tempo control like an Invoker is good. Mm -hmm. Storm Spirit's good, but that got banned out. Um, Puck could be an option. Yeah, Puck would actually also be real. I think Puck's actually maybe better than the Invoker now that you bring it up. Yeah, and they'll um, ban out the Bane. Uh, they're expecting a core silencer, I guess. Yeah, I, I think Lions possible. are misreading this one. It could be a um, core silencer. I mean, it's it's not hmm. that out of the question, but. I'm trying to think what like, the benefit of doing you get your ag's potential refresher later on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Silence is that good at dealing DPS against Slack Brumas. He's not really good at man fighting, so you're just guaranteeing a fast ag scepter is is kind of the benefit of this core silencer. But I Ten I don't know if it's worth remaining. it. I think you can just run that four position and yeah. gradually get up to like Five a much later ag scepter. Wait, the ags is great on silencer, but it basically just gives you damage and. I don't think Reserve Empire time. are going to be lacking on damage that hard with a Tide or the Tiny, and if they go the Invoker like a, or whoever... Yeah, or Puck. Puck's yeah. got plenty of damage. Or a, a Quap Ten could work here. I don't remaining. think that's really a classic Resolution hero, but maybe wishful thinking. I'm still wanting to see that Quap with all of our new pure damage. Remaining. But A couple of seconds left. Empire will settle on the Centaur. Okay, okay. so this is... Radiant initiator, Tempo pick. Controller type hero. Yeah, so it'll be probably Tiny Wisp mid, off lane Tide, safe lane Centaur is the way I would, I would think. Yeah, this, yeah. Will, this will work out. So they'll prioritize a really fast blink on the Centaur, let Big Brag get in there, create some space for Tiny, and then, well, just let the, the team yeah. fight Madness uh, break out anytime they've got a Ravage Global Silence available. I see this team hungry for blood. Yeah, so very focused on the, I guess, the, the burst seconds, damage when you're picking up the Centaur. Seconds, so remaining. Similar to the Puck where you've got the good burst if you get that blink initiation, Five or maybe even a bit remaining. more burst damage and just that bit tankier. And I guess you get the global utility of a Stampede. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's true. Very global-centric uh, strategy from Empire. Hmm. I mean, I guess the Stampede here mainly good against running from the Brewmaster Ultimate. I'm trying to, like, because I still think the Puck maybe would have been a better pick than Centaur. Mm -hmm. They both kind of have good burst damage, good initiation. Ten seconds um, remaining. Yeah. But the Stampede's like the one thing Centaur gives you, the Puck doesn't. And that's just good against Five the Brewmaster. Which, at the end of the day, Brewmaster is one of those controls the entire game kind of heroes, as we saw last Empires game. So maybe it's an alright plan. I am a little surprised to see Furion as the final pick here for Lions. That'll be the Jonas hero. Looks like he'll be headed to the off lane. Prophet has fallen out of favor as he's, I think, they're 
as more heroes have kind of come into captain's mode, there are more options to kind of deal with them, and the play style has sort of just fallen off. It's it's not a rat Dota kind of a patch, not nearly like it was, you know, three, four patches ago. But I feel like Empires have a lot of tools to deal with it, you know? Wisp Tiny is pretty good against Furion. You see him ratting in, you sneak into the tree line behind him, and then all of a sudden you're getting blown up by a big tiny with a whomping willow. Feels like a, a very brave pick here from yep. Lions. I think they're picking it to actually use it in the first 10 minutes of the game for the early ganks. Okay. Using it with like a Witch Doctor AA with Chilling Touch is a lot of killing potential, so... I feel uh, if they're not picking it for that, then I, I'm with you. I don't think it, the Rat Dota is not going to happen against the blinks of a Tide, a Centaur, and the Wisp plus Tiny relocate, so... I, I feel like the, the, if you're picking something like the Prophet here, it's entirely to have him be active early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I know I I always overlook is the those like level three, level four teleports to turn around a, a fight in yep. another lane is, is pretty damn important. So it sounds like both these teams have qualified for Kiev, regardless of outcome. They're just fighting for the number one seed. Okay. Is that the the update from the Starlighter admins? Well, is that the that, way it works the players seem to be saying that? They seem to both be they said seem Kiev nonetheless, so Oh, okay. So they know I, how the tiebreaker is. I think both work teams out. won the head to head against the other teams. Um having ah, beaten okay. both teams beat Secret, Empire with a default win, Lions just beating Secret. Mm -hmm. I think both teams need VP Polar as well as okay. Whoever so that they're, last they're the natural kind of victors here. Okay, yeah. well that's that's they're cool. Battling for first and second seed. Yeah. All right. Very cool. So, Lejant Team yeah. Lions going to Kiev. That is that is fun. They're also going to China. They're going to the Island Land Finals. Yeah. yeah. These guys are making a big. Well, I'm happy to see Era doing well. I recognize quite a few of the other players from the Han days, but you know, Era on Fnatic and all the the. Nonsense that happened with TI4. Glad to see him making a, a recovery and, you know, coming back strong into the competitive scene. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, Parko, let's introduce some rosters here. Radiant side, we've got Team Lions. It'll be Handskin on the Ancient Apparition. He'll be joining Era on the Slark in the safe lane. Mid, it'll be Seal Kid here on the Witch Doctor. Ape Mother will be on the Brewmaster. And that leaves us with Jonas. He's on the Nature's Prophet, and he will just sack that off lane, rocking that Ohio set. I think you and I have had this conversation, oh, yeah. but... Big fans of the set, not fans of the Trian, and as I'm looking at that, there's a fight in the mid lane. Uh-oh. Ape Mother going heavy onto Resolution and Aloha Dance, but nope, no first blood. Well, quickly introduce the Dire side. Team Empire in the offlane will send Yoki on the Tide Hunter. Mid lane's going to be the Wist, Tiny Jewel Lane, Aloha Dance, and Resolution pairing up. We're going to see the Silencer played by Oz Wanna Fly, and then Centaur up top be played by Silent. Quelling Blade first for him. Very just counter profit light, a counter profit item and eh, help him last hit a bit too so why not he doesn't need the style shield he's not even up against any hero in lane yeah yeah that's uh you know we've seen some teams prioritizing the safe lane centaur and it, it feels a little weird but it's actually pretty damn good in a situation like this you can expect a pre 10 minute blink pretty much guaranteed especially with that quelling blade and we i think we've all seen what can happen when a centaur gets that free farm and um, starts to control a game. We'll see down bottom the teleport in from the Fury on canceled. He'll channel it further back as Yoki may be in a little trouble. Into TP. There we go. And cold feet will not come out in time. No problemo. He makes it back to the well and Yoki will live. Yep. A little victory there. Jonas did rotate down, does not have a TP, so that will pull him into kind of an awkward position. Yeah. He's, I guess could, he's jungling anyway. He can just take the next jungle camp, but yeah, yeah it's not not too bad. Slow down his farm a bit. Not the not the free farm he's looking for. He'd love to go for like a courier snipe or something early on, Illusion. which he could have maybe done, but that's not going to happen now with the the TP on cooldown and the courier headed back to base. So yeah, uh, I think Empire just with the slightly more stable lanes with Tide actually in the off lane contesting the farm, getting a bit out of the lane, Centaur free farming the fast blinks. So the Lions. They're also going to have a slower level 6 on 8 Mother because he's in this dual lane mid. So this is uh, it does mean the Wist Tiny don't dominate him and 8 Mother can CS a bit, but having a slower level 6 means it takes a bit longer before he can look to move around and use that ultimate. Yeah, I, I think this laning stage is looking really good for Empire as long as they can avoid feeding in this mid lane. Resolution will get isolated here as the cast goes flying around, but one Avalanche will keep him okay and makes it back to the tower. So mid lane, sort of a wash. Tiny and Brew farming pretty comparatively a two on two. Uh, Centaur, of course, racking up the free farm in the safe lane. And ahead of Era, uh, Tide's done a good job staying up uh, right in their faces and you know pulling Handskin to focus on harassing, but has pulled Era's attention off the creep wave and yeah. in general doing a bit better than this Nature's Prophet, it feels like. Yep, you just get naked smash off here or there. Yes. Goes for the kill oh once God. and suddenly it's a little harder. Nice bit of play here. Eight mother in the mid lane. 
Toss under the tower. This Who's looks like a first go? blood. Yep, Cass oh, flies out and well, away. anticlimactic oh. as he dies to the dire, but what a <laughs> setup from Resolution. And Another again, toss. the toss back onto Seal Kid. Not enough mana for a stun this go around, but Aloha Dance could give it oh. to him. He just bottle. Where's Is the tether bottle? Enough? There's the Wisp Spirits. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't need to sip charge. it. And some sticks. Ooh. Resolution. All right, he's going to be all right here. Oh, God. Close call. He should have just bottled to give him the stun man up. Aloha <laughs> Dance playing a bit crazy there, yeah, but... Yeah, actually, I don't know why he was saving I, it. I think he maybe just... I'm guessing he didn't notice, because that, that made no sense. But at the end of the day, they attack. get the two kills, and... Well played. It's a big trade. There was a kill on Tide while that was going on. I did not see what happened there, but... Yeah, I was I was looking at the mid. So, all right, Yoki will get taken out. Looks like just uh, maybe Eric caught him with a pounce. Yep. You know, you've got hand scan here. He does have two points in uh, the cold feet, so... It's all it takes, I guess. Still, very cheeky from Resolution, though. You'll see Wiss Tiny pick up kills, but not that often on the back of a toss into a tower like that. It takes some kind of unique positioning to make it happen. Glad, I, glad I caught it. Now, this mid lane, fantastic start now. Aloha Dance, he's working on an urn. He's going to have it pretty quickly. And everything just looking good. Did someone just cancel a TP top? I think. I, I thought I, I saw someone try TP top. I'm, maybe I'm seeing things. It's early. Oh, part of that Christmas recovery. The Christmas recovery, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Eris mm. Slark, I'm, uh, he's kind of low on last so hits right now. It feels like only 23. Yeah. Uh, if you just like, compare it to the Centaur, who is actually free farming, it's still quite the disparity. Eight Mother picks up a Haste Rune, fill up his bottle, gets a little aggressive here in the mid, but Eris just. I, I don't know. I don't see the Slark being a really huge threat. That assist will help, but even just glancing at net worth, he is. I, I just worry about the, the pain this Centaur is going to bring. That is some serious tempo controlling that Silent will have. Going in bottom lane again on the tide. TP out. It's going to call people in proc in time, but a damage. Ooh, close. Need yeah, one or two more lives. Yeah, Watermelon, and again, pulls Jonas into the lane, and he'll just pick up a TP scroll. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the top, Silent and Always Want to Fly already moving into the tower. They've got the meat wagon, a couple of range creeps, and they'll get it pretty attack. low off this push. Lions they'll get it unless they yeah, have a TP a in. It's just a profit, though. They don't. It's gonna get down. Okay, it's gonna get down to deny range. So they're gonna go for this. I think end. they'll commit. Yeah, with the siege creep, they they can do it a lot. Centaur is Radiant easier, structures so. are fortified. All right, there's your glyph. Buys him some time. Standard build from the centaur, Radiant maxing uh, the double edge. This is the last hit. Radiant <laughs> top tower <laughs> has fallen. Oh, yeah, costly, but it, it could have been another cup under card for his play. Costly mistake. They've silly lost centaur. Yep. Empire count him out. Missed the tower last hit. <laughs> but he's gonna have a uh, like six, seven minute blink. Yep. That's uh, about what you would expect when he's racking up these CS. I, I really like that he called the audible to get the Quelling Blade. You almost never see that on a Centaur, but in this situation, it just makes perfect yeah. sense. I mean, he's tiny on the move. They want to... Okay, Silk Kid going to instant TP. That's a mm -hmm. smart move, but... Thinking about it, how much do they want to rotate here? Tiny and Wisp are only level 5, so no relocate. They have to be very careful about their movements. Yep. Wisp will have the urn on the way, and Tiny... He's got his power treads up, leveling up that toss. There's also a stampede, it's the kind of other scary thing, so... Mm -hmm. You go for a kill, there's the potential just to save save a teammate, or even help get a kill yourself if you're a team empire with this. This tide has just crushed the assault fire. Like, this is just... Like, sure, he's TP'd away and had to spend 200 gold on TPs and he died once, but... I would say he's essentially won this off lane as far as doing more... Mm -hmm. Getting more out of the lane than he should, slowing down Eris farm... Forcing them to go on him and and yeah. living most of the time. Like this is ideal scenario for a tide right now. He's yeah. even got ancient stacks to pull back on. He's pulled a lot of attention to that bottom lane as no we talked about. Lane. A full oh, finally initiation resolution goes in. Okay, hit by a clap. Always on a fly roll rotate over. The coconuts bouncing back and forth. And yeah, that is one cute little uh, little counter there. The witch doctor and his coconuts pretty good against Wisp tethers. Oh, Aloha dance tethers to the low ground. Okay, land with my heart there. <laughs> And Silent at top, he wants these big neutrals here. Eh, careful! <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, I'm glad I caught that one. <laughs> His Trinkle Boots is still on the ground, too. Oh my god. Uh. There's no one up here. This is one of those games where, I ah, kind of wish you didn't sack the offlane. <laughs> I'm they? watching him. I saw him double edge. I'm like, okay, Ooh, look he, at he, he's struggling to kill this. Oh, bottom lane. Reload. Okay. okay, coming on to Yoki. He's five, so there is not a Ravage yet, but Resolution is hungry. And Handscan has just what Resolution needs. There are some brown boots here on the AA, but Avalanche will catch him, tosses his buddy Slark in for good measure, and Era forced to pounce back to safety as they relocate back towards the mid lane. So Empire just a one for nil out of it. Nice little trade there, and Centaur, does he get his boots back? Yep. Whew. 
He's like, I don't need this camp. Let's get some revenge. <laughs> <laughs> this time he's not even bothering, like, trying to be fancy, drop his tranquils, whatever it may be. <laughs> oh, Bruce split in the mid lane. Tiny isolated by the tornado. Aloha Dance trying to make it out here. Fire Panda will actually die to the tower, and this will not be a successful rotation. Resolution with a lot of mana. Toss forward. Eight Mother certainly going to go down. And Resolution gets another one up on the scoreboard. Now Lions in retreat. There's your Stampede from the Centaur. Negative Earn on a handskin. Seal Kid comes in, throws out a cast, but Resolution with the stun toss back. Voodoo Restoration keeps him alive, but not long enough. Now Big Bad Brads joining the party. Double-edged stun onto Jonas. And it is a bloodbath here in the mid. Now Era joins the party, uses the shadow, uh, the, the ultimate there, the shadow dance. Oh he, oh, he couldn't get it off. Oh, no, he dies. Hanskin goes down again. They just keep TPing in here, gods and empire, racking up the kills. Oh, Eight Mother, he's back. He's hungry for more. Line him up and knock him down. Empire going to commit for it. Eight Mother dies again. Nine to two, nine minutes in. All of a sudden, Empire, without conceding a single casualty, Pick up some Dyer's huge momentum. That was a full five man attack. wipe. And two deaths Radiant's on Brewmaster. It was like, oh, can it make it six? They just went, went in one by one, and guess what? That's into a silencer who now suddenly has Dyer's 12 stolen <laughs> intel. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Okay. You're in trouble. Oh gosh. That was awful. That was just one of the worst oh. ways to take a fight at the 10 minute mark, I think. Uh, Lions could have gone for there. That's, that's really I, unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think. You oh, look at, like, even without a Ravage, too. Yeah, no Ravage needed. Sentol, nice time to rotate in, and things looking really good here for, for Empire. I think Lions just need to... Like, you look at most kind of Lions safe lane slots yeah. when they go this Midas build, like Black does it a lot, Kuro's done it a bit. You don't actually go and fight. Like, even when you get your Treads Midas, fighting is not something you want to do. You have to wait till you have your Blink or Shadow Blade. Oh my gosh, it's another disaster here in the bottom. They will get the kill on Silent Yoki with a decent Ravage, but the follow-up just isn't there. Empire with reinforcements on their way. Wisp tethers to the tide. Now always want to fly. Dropping the hammer on the Witch Doctor. The Wisp Balls are there, and, well, they don't smell good. Jonas, he'll try to TP out. That's not going to happen. And once more, Empire clean it up and get another series of kills. I think that one was a three for one. Slark lives, but, yeah, very minor victory. More intel still. This silencer racking it up. He didn't, somehow didn't get intel for the Witch Doctor kill. I don't know how that happened. Weird. Oh, Era. He does not have an ultimate here. He silenced, already used the pounce, and uh, all right. that was a pretty easy pickoff. <laughs> 16 You're intel stolen. Okay, just, let's transition. Always want to fly into a carrier this yeah, point. <laughs> you might as well. He's got a bracer. Oh, mid lane initiation onto eight mother. Resolution comes in. Silent blinks forward with a double edge. Panda had the split, but couldn't get it off in time. 14 to three. Could be a quick game too. Yeah, that is. <laughs> this game going very poorly for Lions and. I mean, talked about a bit during the draft, like, you, the profit pick just Dyer's not really doing too much, went straight jungle, attack. and we've seen very little out of Jonason. Just all the lanes really falling apart, I'd say. Like, mm -hmm. not even picks aside, they've just been outplayed. Relocate onto Jonas, attack. Silence setting it up, and tosses that big particle ball forward, and gets another one. Let's uh, take a gander at the graphs here, and yep, about 10,000 gold, 7,500 experience going He's the way of attack. Empire. Tiny feeling the benefits of that taxi service as he heads back mid. Has his drums up, and well, that Wampin Willow is on the way. Point booster and Ogre Club already secured. Yeah, so Tide probably gonna go farm this big ancient stack now, get his Blink Dagger up, and from here, Empire have so much big control fatty. over any team fight with the Blink Centaur and the Blink Tide. Got the Ravage for the team fight, the Centaur just for like the single pickoffs, and Eris in full catch up mode on his Slark. He's just gonna now pick up his treads when he had this Midas a good three, four minutes ago. So he's mm -hmm. died twice since buying this Midas. This is not ideal for a Slark. Uh, yeah, certainly not ideal. Maybe a little bit of hope for recovery, but this will be one of these games where, sure, Era now has a farming tool. He can start to recover, but what about everyone else? Ancient Apparition is. Finally found a six, as has the Witch Doctor. Dyer's bottom tower so two key ultimates attack. that could help turn things around a little bit. Jonas looks like he's going for a recovery Midas also, but I'm not sure this is the kind of game you want to go double Midas. Yoki will get caught out here trying to do the Ancients, and oh no, just shy of the Blink Dagger. He's not going to be able to get it in time. They will jack the last of his Ancient Stacks, but now a compromising position perhaps. Silencer comes in, hits him with a Curse of the Silent. The rest of Lions on the way. Ravage is available when Tide's up, and that's in about 20 seconds. Jonas initially initiated on by Silent. Cold Feet fly through, and he'll just get tossed into the Roche Pit. Hanskin wants to TP out. He'll get stunned and brought down, and 
end of the day, they'll trade their Tide for two kills, lose their Ancients, but still yeah. not too bad for Empire. Yeah, not, not too bad for Empire. That they know it's warded on this. Actually, it's being dewarded already. Or I think the ward just expired. That little cliff ward just sees so much and yeah. punishes the tide. But end result still okay for Empire. They're gonna have a slightly slower oh, tide blink, but overall the big picture things are looking fantastic. Mm, definitely. Silencer still not really getting much farm priority. Looks like they won't transition him anytime soon. But always want to fly Radiance with some power treads on the horizon. Attack. It would seem Yogi now back down to 400 away from his blink. They'll find Seal Kid in the jungle. Another relocate finds a kill on Seal Kid, and the unstoppable streak continues for resolution. That puts Tiny now six zero and eight, and only 150 gold short of his Aghanim scepter. Radiance yeah. bottom tower. Lions can attack. maybe push this top tower. They don't have to worry about the relocate for now. Although any TP from Centaur or Type will probably deter them from uh, committing to it, but Dyer's top makes a bit of a tower trade, which attack. is when you're in Lion's position, you'll take Radiant's that. Wisp finds hands can can't cancel his TP. Yeah, nothing the little Dyer's Wisp can do. Just watches him hop fortified. out. Jonas tried Dyer's to split push here, best he can. Gets attack. a Glyph Force out on this tier Radiant's one tower. His resolution tower rotates up. Attack. Can't find Jonas and oh, Ice Blast on the way. Resolution, he gets clipped by it. But will secure the deny on the tower. Aloha Dyer's Dance pokes it. And that is an Aghanim's on the way here. On the bottom lane. Uh, so Blink hooks on bottom lane. Jonas may just get solo kill here. Yep. Ooh, little funky lag spikes there. Silent coming back in, trying to give him the axe. Seal Kid is silenced, and, well, they can't lock down Silent quite yet. And they indeed do make it happen. A one for one. Good for Lions. Yep. Sark gets the kill, so we'll. Yeah, very good for Lions. A little bit of gold going his way, and if Era's going for that blink, he's not that far off. And those are the kind of traits which will slowly get Lions a little bit back into this game. So you got to be careful if you're Team Empire. Yep. Radiance top tower is under attack. I think Prophet, yeah, board is Midas, so he did buy it before he died. So he's going to be back and just get to use that right away. Didn't actually miss out on buying it in time. Yep. Uh, looks like it. Yeah, it's on the courier here, a little pudgling. Mid lane, Yoki holding the high ground, thinking about a rotation. I think he just got scattered out by that ice blast, though. Yeah, sure did. He's got himself a Ravage. He wants to use it. Is under attack. We'll have to save it for another day. Yeah, Lions deward their jungle, getting back some map control right now. And every time you say Lions, I hear Alliance. Yeah. I don't know if that's lions, me, you, alliance. or a combination of both. I mean, these players have been, like, standing <laughs> in for Alliance, not <laughs> practically <stuff>. on Alliance. <laughs> yeah. If you look at who the Alliance has had to play for them this style of the season, I feel like some of these players, Jonas as well as Ape Mother, have played as many games for Alliance as they have for LeJohns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a true statement. Well, this tiny set's pretty cool. The Whomping Willow, it's like a fiery tree. It's kind of neat. Looks like some petrified wood or something. Cool. Radiance Middle Tower is under set. attack. Okay. Yeah, the Radiance face looks a little derpy, but the club of the igneous stone. I'm gonna go ahead and say it looks like looks pretty badass. It looks like it, he's got a jack o' lantern face. <laughs> Big doughy jack o' lantern. Mid tier one tower gets taken out, putting that branch to good use as Tiny starts whomping on the structures. Also finds his level 11, so grow that much more potent. Meanwhile, his teammates in the bottom group it up for another tier one tower push. The last of the outer towers uh, or tier one towers for Lions. They've got a glyph, but eh, I don't think they'll be saving this one. Yeah. Right. Radiant structures are fortified. Throw away. You've got a level 11 tiny now with an Ag Scepter. This is Radiant's where bottom tower Empire is have under a attack. pretty big lead. Brewmaster is still working on that blink as well. Radiant's Ape Mother's had a pretty fallen. sad game here in the mid lane against the Wisp Tiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one in four. And unfortunately, Brew is just not Dyer's one of those heroes that you can easily say, yeah, just add a plus one and then we'll do this two on two dual mid thing. That'll be great. That is way better for Tiny Wisp than it is for uh, Brew Radiant's plus one and Brew Witch Doctor. Just attack. He needs that experience, Dyer's man. Tower yeah. They just did. I mean, they outplayed them so heavily too with those nice t toss backs yeah, as well. Yeah, that's. That's true. That's good stuff. No, no denying there was uh, there there were some big plays made by Resolution. Switch chat erupted in just a, a series of R gods after those plays, rightfully so. Oh. Now they're moving to the tier two bottom. Tiny just going as hard as he can, and this little window will have one creep left. Eight Mother flies in, gets silenced, tossed in the air, and he might get brought down right away. Stampede's oh, used, and that secures the kill. Now Tide comes in, Ravage on two, Hanskin and Era in trouble. Shadow Dance will go off, but. Hanskin gets left behind, and it's a fast two for nil as Empire. Look at this tier two tower. That was sick play from Always Radiant on the Fly. Doing what fortified. was not done by Power Rangers last game. Getting that insta silence off on the Brewmaster when he blinks Radiant's in. They were ready for it. Attack. They baited that. They they wanted Brewmaster to go in then with the, the blink clap ulti. And mm -hmm. You go for the clap before the ulti, and Silencer says, all day long, I'll hit that silence. So. Yeah, it's one of those kind of uh, ninja nerfs that the Brewmaster's gotten. His cast points are just 
ridiculous now. Yeah. They're the longer than his D, and it's hard for him to channel that ultimate if you have a silencer with his finger on the trigger. Centaur maybe thinking about a Vanguard here with just a Ring of Health stout shield. Yeah, he's actually got the oh, there you Crimson go. God. Ooh. He's got the Buckler. Okay. Oh, the Buck. Okay, just a recipe, a recipe off. Yeah. And he's ooh, 700 gold. Yeah, he's basically there. I mean, good kind of item to get when you want to stop pushing high ground and... Drums out on Always Want to Fly. Maybe the Silencer will start to transition to a little more of a carry. 22 stolen in at 18 minutes. Yeah. Jesus. Insane. And he's going to flank Eric here. Um, could be 24. Kill? All right, Eric gets aggressive, goes on to Silent. Ice Blast comes in. Silent may shatter here. Uses the Stampede to get away. Era. Will get slow, not gonna be able to pursue the kill. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Aid Mother doing some damage to Aloha Dance. Death Ward's there, and Aloha Dance will mech tether over the tree line. Not enough, as Witch Doctor still able to finish him off. That's the end of an unstoppable streak. So Seal Kid gets a uh, pretty penny out of that one. Yep. Eris still hunting around this bottom lane. He's healed back up with the uh, ultimate end. Not an easy kill by any means, but you've got that global p potential of the Prophet TP. Ice Blast on cooldown, but one more second and that's back up, so... Era goes on to always want to fly, charges the Dark Pack, always want to fly, stands his ground, Ice Blast will shatter him here. And now Silent on the run, Jonas trying to bring him down. One. Yeah, I may look to loop around and... Yeah, can you go. still, on Centaur, can you still deny yourself if you double edge? When you're with you the, ice the, the ice blast on, I there, know there was changed. a period yeah. where, yeah, if you had, if you were hit by ice blast and the, the double, like you had less than 400 HP and you double edged, it would count as a suicide and you killed yourself. Like it would yes. say like Silent has denied, committed suicide. Not sure if you can still do that, but it was a fun little like YOLO play you could do, a run in, double edge someone, and they don't get any yeah. any credit for it. You could also do it with Soul Catcher. That was another cool one. Yeah, yeah. If you were Soul Catcher, I'd play the Shadow Demon. So, something tells me that's been fixed. Bottom line. Right? Maybe we'll see it here. Yeah, right on the Handskin and Ape Mother. Handskin goes down right away. Ape Mother does have a split. We'll be able to get it off this time. They'll hold the Global Silence. Silent. Locked in place. Yeah, well, it gets really kid out anyway. Yep. Even without that, it's just Vanguard Buckler. You're not doing any damage with those Brew Splits. And now Tiny's down here, and he's looking at Resolution... Or, pardon me, the, the Storm... He's looking at this panda. He's looking at Ape Mother. He's saying, hey, this could be a kill, but caught in the Cyclone and not going to be able to give him the club. So, it seems they're thinking about a Roshan here. They've got numbers by the pit, got Ravage, got Global Silence. I don't see any way Lions can come and contest this, so it should be pretty straightforward. Yep. Yeah, I think it's one of those, like, sure, they'd like to. I just don't think it's a possibility. Yeah, I think I just get to my problem. Fighting into global silence, Ra Ravage. Ravage, global, and then you've got the Centaur and Tiny, the, the big bruisers in the front lines. Yeah, just this is... I think the only way you initiate this is if you hit all five with an Ice Blast, and you've got, like, the Witch Doctor hiding in the trees here, ready to drop a big Death Ward, then maybe you've got a chance. So, look at the Ice Blast part, but too little too late. Roche has already gone down, and it will be Tiny. That picks up the Aegis of the Immortal. The global damage is kind of pesky with the AA plus Profit. And that, and that, I think, was part of the reason also to pick the Profit, just to have that. Even when you fall behind, if you can scout someone out with the Ice Blast, get them nice and low, drop the two ultimates at once, and mm -hmm. pick off some of these squishier heroes. But it, they haven't really found anything with that this game. They've got way too far behind. Well, the, that and the issue is Empire don't have a lot of squishy heroes. you basically got Wisp yeah. and Silencer, and Wisp, although normally squishy, I mean, look at him. He's got Power Treads, Mech Urn, and just a casual Vit Booster. <laughs> I would not Fun. say he's squishy. Yeah. Silent in the front lines here. Stampede used. Charges right in. Stun on two. Hanskin and Jonas get locked down. The global silence is there. Always want to fly. Will get isolated by Era. But they've already lost their nature's profit. Seal Kid now stuck in the trees. The cast doing a lot of work here as they're locked in place. Mech will be used and resolution. Well, survives the storm and shops him down. Centaur gets picked off by the Brewmaster as we were watching that. But it's not over yet. Yoki still holding on to his Ravage. Uses it now. Brew able to split through it. Jonas. May live here. Nope, not gonna happen. Resolution will fall. He's got the Aegis, so he's coming on back. Yoki still with plenty of hit points to spare. Brew still in split form, but needs to be a little bit careful here. He's going back into Panda form in just a second. Yoki, can he hit him with a gush? Nope, can't get off the anchor smash, but on the low ground, Aloha Dance with no way to interrupt the TP. Yoki had the Yules to cancel that, but couldn't get down there. I think his blink on cooldown still, so... Okay-ish fight for Lions, I feel. Like, they didn't really win it, but I thought they were going to get annihilated against the ultis as well as the uh, 
the ages that the tiny had. So just to kind of break even there is probably as good as it gets. Yeah. Did cost him a profit buyback, which is where it, it was a little bit expensive. Not that there's any huge item profit once. He just wants any items, which he currently has. Uh, he really wants a Maelstrom, David, but still a little ways yeah. off with all that buyback money. But yeah, you're right. Uh, a break even. I mean, Empire, I think they'll be okay with it. And after the back end of this, or, or towards tower off the tail end of that fight, they'll move into this tier two tower. Structures so, still fortified. some obvious momentum. And I mean, the nice thing about having a tiny just gets you so much siege power. You know, you don't have to win every fight because after skirmishes like that, you can just go down Radiant's a lane and take a tower down pretty easily. Forward. Silent down bottom. We'll get initiated on, but now they relocate. They'll bring down each apparition first. Eight mother has no split. He's locked in place. He's been brought down. It'll be a two for nil in the bottom as they abuse the power of that relocate mechanic. Now Yoki in the mid wants to keep his tower safe. Can't get the deny. Sets up a Yules onto Era, but he's all by his lonesome without a Ravage. Not where a Tide wants to be. Even a Death Ward committed for this as they take down the Watermelon. Now Resolution. He's joined the party. Nature's Prophet gets clobbered down. And the rest of the Radiant on retreat. Era on the run, silenced, disarmed, but we'll have a dark pact, and I think this Slark is safe. Yeah. Sandra, you're asking the extra bit of movement speed too. Ice Blast's gonna go flying in, doesn't actually land though, so. Ooh. No Regus coming from Lion. But. Still not really. It's well, another one of these very awkward fights all around the map, but I think Empire coming out Radiant's way ahead just across the board, and now they'll claim yet another tier 2 tower off it. So, subjective after objective. Even when Lions have an okay fight, it's not like there's any fall off towers or any real pressure being applied. They Radiant's don't have any map control right now. It's fallen. Empire who have great vision everywhere. And they keep taking the tower here or there. Even if they lose a hero, and even if it's a key hero, it's still just one, one step closer time and time again to finishing this game. Mm -hmm. Well, looking at the graphs, about 20,000 gold, 15,000 experience. Empire feels still feeling attack. pretty good in general. Always want to fly. Well, he's going to pay the ultimate price as he shatters up there in the top lane. But Bottom Brew almost caught by an avalanche. Eight Mother with the quick fingers. He'll Radiant's blink back to safety. Or Willy attack. Resolution still in hot pursuit, but he gets yuked. Oh, boy. Breaking ankles. <sighs> hmm. <sighs> So Sounds picked up the plate mail. He's going to be pink going for a Shiva's guard. They've already got the AC on the Tiny, and Tiny has a Daedalus, so well, more or less has a Daedalus. Oh, Seal Kid. Feeling the hurt of the Centaur. Henskin TPs to the wrong place at the wrong time. They call that the danger zone, my friend. Another easy two for nil as Empire continue their momentous streak towards the Radiant base. Buyback used on the Ancient Apparition. He'll throw out an Ice Blast, but Tiny chopping away at the tower. No Glyph available here. Eight Mother goes in. They throw out a Global. He gets stunned. Do they have the damage? Yoki's there with the Ravage. But Era BKBs it. He'll be immune, doing the mo as much damage as he can. Now the Witch Doctor also buying back. It's a 5v5. Primal Split will come out. Era getting low, forced to Shadow Dance. Resolution cold-footed and taking the Death Ward, but will weather the storm. About half duration left on the Brew ulti. Witch Doctor, the first casualty here. Wisp stuck inside the Tornado. That'll actually buy him some time as Brew comes back into Panda form and won't have much left. Jonas trying to kite around in the tree line. That won't be successful. They've lost the Wisp, but it's still Empire coming out ahead here. Eight Mother looking for a chance to blink through the tree line, but Silent interrupts it with a double edge. What a crit! Daedalus out on resolution, and... Possibly I, getting to that GG point here. It was, yeah. That, to me, was the last hurrah from Lions. They just got the Slack BKB. He used it, and Empire just back off. They've got, they've got this Tri-Core who's falling. just so tanky. You look at this Tide Center Tiny on the front lines. They just look beefy. Mm -hmm. And then between the three of them, they've got some, like, 6,000 HP. You're yeah. not bringing them down during that BKB if you're a Slack. He just yeah. doesn't have the damage. Exactly. And uh, now Lions, they've, they've made a hold, which kind of looks good, but it was costly. That's one, two, three buybacks. Profits is still on cooldown. So they now have four buybacks Whoa. on cooldown. Air is the only one who even has it as a possibility and is short in the money. So there, there is a lot riding on the back of this Slark right now. His net worth is pretty good. He's number two overall, very far behind the Tiny, but it's the rest of Lions that are stuck in Strug City and... Looks like they're they're living in the projects. Well, I, I, if Empire want to play this safe, they can wait for next next Roche, but they could. I don't now know that they need to, but yeah, I think waiting for Ravage Global is about all they need. And I think that's I think that's a good plan here. That maybe even like another Tiny's gonna have his Yasha, his Manta style coming soon, so Whoa. items galore for yeah, the Empire this is, side. This is that critical mass. You probably want a Manta, and then last item look towards either a Butterfly or a Mask of Madness to replace those drums. And uh, 
either go like the Mask of Madness and like backdoor Elena Barracks and just take him down or go for the raw damage. Jonas up top. This is what I was picturing in the draft. It's like, hmm. Centaur, Tiny Wisp, really fifth pick in a Furion? I mean, I just don't see him split pushing at all. And he wasn't even that close to the base. Still just gets dropped. Yeah. Oh. Trying in the wrong neighborhood. Yoki does have a Ravage in about two. Global Silence used. Yoki could try to turn this around. Gonna try to wait out the BKB on Era. Forced to use the Ravage before he falls. Era still immune to it. Now always want to fly in an awkward position. Resolution on the back. Let's see if Empire can turn this one around. Whopping down Seal Kid. A double kill for Era out of the gate. Now Eight Mother locked down and crit down by the Resolution. A two for four as Slark, the lone survivor, leaps away and will TP out. But another disastrous team fight for the Radiant as Empire start making movements towards the base. Yeah, I don't know if they get Rex now in here, but it's looking pretty good for them. Relocate up in 15. Not that they really need a profit. Well, he's going to try to do profit things. Yeah. Oh, I, bottom tower. All right, yeah. push to tier one, it's something like Rex. But I, not that he can do a hell of a lot to try and defend this tiny off, and he can cleave down all of his trees in about two seconds. So... Radiance middle barracks. Yeah, middle lane of barracks will go down. And relocate onto the Prophet. Jonas will uh, be punished. Well, it doesn't even get the tower. At least, at least he's got his Maelstrom. At least he's got his Maelstrom. Look at you looking at those positives, Parker. I like that. Uh oh, now they relocate back. They find Era. Shadow Dance keeps him alive. Pounce out. Will not connect. Now Era in big trouble. BKB used, but the Whomping Willow has the reach of many a tentacle. As it locks down the Slark, Resolution does get cold feet as he's stunned in place, but now with Slark down and no buyback, they've got 60, yep. seconds, of, 60 seconds of field day punishment on this Radiant base. Probably going to see the game-winning blow here with another lane of Rex. And even yeah. if they don't get Megas off this, I think it's still it's still going to be GG. There's just too much. Mm -hmm. Tiny's just too big. I mean, Radiant's simply put at this stage, he's got a buyback home. available. And Huge, huge Radiant's Just look how fast he takes down these structures, four-shotting these barracks. Radiant's oh my god, yeah, Ape Mother. He will still get the split off. Aloha Dance may go down, gets hit by the cask once more. Okay, they get the kill on the Wisp, but at what cost right here? They're going to go back into Brew Mother. Oh my. I like that. Hand scan. Now he's going to get picked, as for the Witch Doctor. Yeah. That appears to be the end. Resolution goes up to the high ground, even diving the well, showing Jonas, this is my house! And this aggression will not stand in my house. GG is called, and it is Empire, your number one team in the group stage online portion of Star Ladder Season America. Impressive showing from them. They'll, yeah, they'll go to Star Ladder with that number one seed, and that's probably pretty useful. You get to not be in the same, I'm not sure if it's the same format, but if it's that two groups of four, you won't be in the same group as IG, who are the number one China seed, I mm -hmm. believe, so. I does help that's you out a little bit as far as the group groups go. So, congratulations, Empire Lions. Though they're still going to Kiev. They, I believe, have the number one two seed according to what the Style Ladder admins have said. So, yeah, it's as he pointed out, I think it comes down to head to heads. Uh, Lions and Empire have both beaten a lot of the top teams that are in the in the running for this tiebreaker. So, Star Ladder does try to use head to head wherever it makes sense. But uh, every every group stage, it just comes down to, to judgment. So as I yep. mentioned before, there will be a post on the Star Ladder website talking about the uh, tiebreaker schedule. But uh, the, two, the two days for matches will be tomorrow and the next day. So you all have to stay tuned to the yep. social media and uh, see what that schedule looks like. All right. Sounds good. Well, that wraps it up for us today. Thank you for joining us for this season of Star Ladder. Uh, it got off to a slow start, but a pretty climactic ending here. The land finals right around the corner coming up on January 15th. I'm Zayori, joined by Gods. If you enjoyed the cast, you can follow us on Twitter, at TV at BTS Gods, both of which in the title of this broadcast. And remember to follow at Beyond the Summit as well to stay up to date with all things happening in the studio here and uh, abroad with Starlighter English coverage. We're done for the day. Hopefully you join us tomorrow for the tiebreakers to see how things settle down and which teams will actually be making it to the main event. But until then, we'll see you later.